Alleged wife killer for court tomorrow. As equipo rights farmers owed over $130 million by millers. Guyanese scholar who died in Peru to be laid to rest tomorrow. And in sport, no West Indians in ICC top 10 tests and Monday rankings. These and more right now on our Thursday, August 23 edition of MTV's News Update. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Good evening to our viewers in Guyana and online. Rice farmers along the Essequibo coast are owed an estimated $137 million from millers for paddies supplied in the first crop of 2018, according to the Ministry of Agriculture. Chelsea Griffith reports. In a statement today, Minister of Agriculture Noel Holder criticized the millers for the delay in payment, which is a violation of the Rice Factories Act. Minister Holder also noted that it is a clear demonstration of unfair business practices. According to the ministry, businessman Wazir Hussein is the chief offender, accounting for 97% of the monies owed to the farmers. During a recent outreach in Essequibo, head of the Essequibo Paddy Producers Association, Nath Ram, told the minister many farmers are scaling back significantly. Holder suggested the withholding the licenses of the millers who have defaulted on their payments to rice farmers. The minister also suggests Ram to make the proposal to the Guyana Rice Development Board. The law stipulates that millers are required to pay farmers half the amount due within two weeks of receiving the paddy. The remainder must be paid off within 42 days. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. You minding me business. I noticed you yesterday. You're there watching, 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 watching. Today you're there here again. Why are you minding me business? I fed up your nosy self. Yeah, baby, I just love your windows. Why are you bad eyeing me window? Like your house single window? What kind of window really in your house? I got some all overs windows that I need to change. Louvers! <laughs> Girl, I let you in for a secret, right? Peace and got a special deal right now. You go down there, you buy 10 window, you get a free bathroom window. Oh, for the love of God, try with them louvers window and go down to Peace and modernize. Peace and windows and doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Time. On time, every time, our service is backed by professional and courteous drivers in safety and comfort. You know the numbers. Call 231-8600, 231-8601, 231-4000, or 231-4001. Located at 25 Orinoc Street. So the next time you need reliability, safety, service, and efficiency, call Confidential Cabs. Safety first. 
An Isla Penitent Church Tongue Security Guard, German Bristol, who allegedly stabbed his wife to death yesterday, is likely to be arranged tomorrow afternoon. A police source told News Update that a post-mortem will be performed on the body of 24-year-old Shanice Lawrence tomorrow morning, following which charges will be laid. Reports are that about 11.30 hours yesterday, Bristol reportedly stabbed Lawrence to the neck at their lot 272 Freeman Street East Le Penitent's home. The woman's body was found in a pool of blood with a knife stuck in her neck. Shortly after, Bristol turned himself into the police at the Brickdown Police Station. Reports are that the young woman and Bristol share a five-year relationship and started to live together two months ago. However, after they began having constant arguments, the woman moved out of the home. The woman subsequently moved in back a few days ago and according to a relative, the couple went to church on Sunday. A relative said she was shocked when she received news of the murder since there were no signs of the two were still having problems. The United States Congressional Delegation visit to Guyana was a fact-finding mission where a number of issues were discussed and areas of cooperation were explored. Details in this report. The team which was headed by Republican Bob Goodlatt included Congressman Steve Cohen, John Rutherford, Scott Peters, Mark Sanford, Richard Hudson, and Todd Rokita, along with several officials of the United States Army. President Granger, in an invited comment, said he briefed the delegation on several areas, including the Guyana-Venezuela border controversy, territorial controversy with Suriname, migration of Venezuelans into Guyana, an economic overview of Guyana's traditional sectors, the emerging oil and gas sector and Guyana's pursuit of a green agenda and environmental conservation, and Guyana's political and governance systems. Uh, we are part of the hemisphere. We have cordial relations with the United States. I see the meeting as largely um, fact-finding. They want to familiarize themselves with the situation in the hemisphere as a whole. And of course, today, the focus was on, on Guyana. So my brief to them was largely in four areas, dealing with um, points that uh, I think they would have been interested in. And I think in that regard, it was successful. The president said during discussions on Guyana's green agenda, the team was impressed with Guyana's commitment to protecting the environment. President Granger noted that the two sides also discussed areas of cooperation, which can be built and enhanced where needed in areas such as security, energy, and disaster response and preparedness. We're not wedded to one concept. We're choosing um, some areas may have solar, some areas may have hydro, some areas may have wind, some areas may have natural gas. So we're looking at a mix um, of energy sources, and we are confident that we will bring the, the tariff rate down to below 15 US cents per kilowatt hour. And maybe um, we keep moving downwards and have, have cheap energy. And this would be important to manufacture. So some of the questions were concerned with um, the possibilities of cheap energy. He noted too that the congressmen particularly have expressed interest in the energy sector and the possibility of access to cheap electricity for Guyanese and other stakeholders. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Carl Greenwich, and Minister of State, Mr. Joseph Harmon, accompanied the president at the meeting. Kippany e. Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Meanwhile, the opposition People's Progressive Party expressed concerns at the high level of secrecy surrounding the recent visit by the U.S. congressional delegation. Here are the details. During a news conference today, opposition leader Barra Jagdio told reporters the visit by the U.S. Congress delegation seems odd. A number of United States congressmen arrived in Guyana on Wednesday in a secret meet with government officials. Minister of State Joseph Harmon had announced that the Congress delegation will be visiting the country for a familiarization visit. We are very worried about all these secret engagements with the government of Guyana and in an open society like, like, like ours. Jagli suspected the team might have had discussions on the Guyana-Venezuela controversy and the oil and gas industry. While the opposition party was not invited to meet the delegation, the party would have liked to be included in the deliberations with the team. I do not believe that any, any attempt to develop a sinister policy 
of preventing democratic forces in Guyana to prevail will be done in such an open manner, particularly open and clumsy manner. Media operatives were barred from interacting with the delegation and a photo opportunity at the Ministry of Natural Resources was allowed on condition that pictures be used until after 14 hours today. The Ghana Telephone and Telegraph Company, GTT, whose headquarters are located near the old Ghana Gold Bowl location, says an undisclosed number of its employees have been tested with high levels of mercury, a problem that the Ministry of Public Health has since been called in to address online news site Demora Waves has reported. Demora Waves reported that Natural Resources Minister Rafael Trotman told GTT on August 18, 2018 that the Ministry of Public Health and the Pan American Health Organization were now responsible for all mercury matters and that the meeting would be organized by the Health Ministry's Permanent Secretary. GTT, according to Demora Waves, confirmed that it has lodged a report with the Ministry of Natural Resources, Ministry of Public Health and the Ministry of Social Protection's Department of Labor after one employee last month recorded a high level of mercury, prompting tests by other workers. GTT's complaint came one day after government held a national stakeholders meeting to discuss mercury and its impacts in addition to a symposium and a public lecture. Several Guyana Geology and Mines Commission workers who shared the same compound with a GGB early this year registered very high mercury levels as a result of a problem with the GGB's facility where raw gold taken by miners to be sold was being burnt. The Gold Board has since removed its operations to Queenstown, Georgetown, where a brand new internationally standardized burning facility has been installed. Recently, government blocked the importation of 30,000 kilograms of mercury from Mexico to be used in the mining industry. Opposition leader Barra Jagdu today dismissed claims made by Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine News that alcohol is present at parliamentary only during special events. Opposition leader Barra Jagdu today dispelled claims made by Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine News that alcohol is present only during birthday and Christmas celebrations at the parliament. The two clashed over the use of $700,000 in food supply for each sitting of parliament. Jagdo declared himself as a witness to alcohol consumption, which he said does not necessarily occur at events. Totally blatant, unbelievable, barefaced lie. Anyone who is in that lounge would see almost at every sitting, one way or another, they find some event, birthdays, whatever else, to have alcohol. Um, consume there. The opposition leader claimed the hefty cost of the food consumption bill is as a result of purchasing expensive alcoholic beverages. He also claimed that similar incidences might be happening at the government ministries and departments. I would find it very generous of some MPs to be buying the, the alcohol and supplying it to the rest of the parliament. I'll find it very generous and let me tell you, I know you don't have too many generous MPs on that side. I believe, I believe, I've seen, I've seen MPs imbibing and most, there is a camaraderie there and people feel uncomfortable about talking about it. The minister also clarified that the hefty bill does not only cover the 65 parliamentarians, but other staff of the parliament, drivers and the media. Sell the gun Guyanese scholar who died in Peru to be laid to rest tomorrow. Stay with us. Yes is a beautiful word. It empowers us. It brings satisfaction. And since you can now earn up to 4% cash back on everyday purchases with Scotiabank Gold MasterCard, that's a lot of satisfaction. Plus, you get a welcome bonus. Scotiabank Gold MasterCard is the card that keeps on giving. So it's easier for you. Say yes to even more cash back. Apply today. Call or visit your nearest Scotiabank branch. Hey, me catch you! 
Yo! The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Oh my God, so much thing this store got. Me confused. And a price low to. Tayo's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances. Located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. And like, all you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors, and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Learn and earn this vacation with Brain Central Online Learning. For as little as $1,500 a month, students can access quizzes from grades 1 to 11 in preparation for the new school year. Enter our challenges and online competitions to win school supplies, books, computer tablets, and much more. Parents, go to braincentral.online for details and to sign up. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. Score of persons today turned out at Merriman's Federal Parliament today to pay their last respect to a young Guyanese scholar who died in Peru while participating in a humanitarian mission. In paying their last respects to the life of the young woman who died while volunteering in Costco, Peru, with a U.S.-based university, a number of persons was observed wiping away tears while others soothed friends and family with their words and a touch. Former Minister of Education Priya Manigchand, on viewing the remains of Persaud, appeared quite emotional. Narendra Posod, an elder cousin of Yogita Posod, the only child of her parents, Devika and Takur Posod, explained that the loss of Yogita is one which is both immense and painful for their entire family and the rest of Guyana. Well, it, was a, it was a tough time. There are lots of documents. I signed literally hundreds of documents. Uh, every document I signed, I had to put on my fingerprint, uh, touch my, uh, my, <laughs> my passport number. Um, and of course, they're in Spanish, so I signed some documents that I didn't really fully. Because we couldn't, I, uh, my cousin was in uh, no Spanish, but we couldn't have enough time to interpret all the documents as I was signing. Prasad remembers the emotions he felt while traveling to Costco, Peru, to retrieve his cousin's body. He explained that while everyone was helpful assisting him with the necessary documentation regarding the release of the body, on a visit to the exact location where Yogita would have volunteered her medical services, he became strongly overwhelmed by the area's high altitude. The place is very, very high. It's about 3,000 some hundred. Uh, meters above sea level. I myself had difficulty. I had to get some treatment there myself or else I would have collapsed. 
When asked about what memory of Yogita he would most want everyone to keep alive, Prasad, trying to hold back tears, explained that it was Yogita's goodwill nature, her desire to want to help people who are in dire need for basic medical care, that took her to Peru. An independent woman who wants to see the best for her family. The ambassador, they cried. A guy and he's going to Peru to help the poor people. She went to the very poor part. She went to almost in the poorest part of Peru, um, Costco. But all her life she wants, she is an independent person. I recall um, going through her report cards because I'm the eldest cousin. And right through, she's, she don't need that help. She was basically just moved on by her mom, her dad. You study, she did well at common entrance at CXC. Yeah. Uh, graduated at the top of her class recently in, in Stony Brook University. But she wants a gift to the poor. She, uh, we want, uh, if there's some way that, I mean, the society at large or government or agencies, and our own family, try to put some, some memory about someone who wants to help the poor. The body of Yogita Prasad is slated to be cremated tomorrow, Friday, August 24, the date of her birth anniversary at the Lalonian foreshore Essequibo coast. Yogita Prasad, who would have become 22 years old tomorrow, collapsed and died suddenly on August 12 while volunteering with a U.S.-based university medical team in Costco, Peru. A post-mortem conducted revealed Prasad died as a result of a pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is a condition caused by excess fluid in the lungs. This fluid collects in the numerous air sacs in the lungs, making it difficult to breathe. In most cases, heart problems causes pulmonary edema. High altitude pulmonary edema, HAPE, can occur when people travel to or exercise at very high altitudes. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Ghana Society for the Blind, for the fifth year, succeeded the Caribbean Secondary Examination Certificate with its top performance during five grade two passes. Here are the details. The Ghana Society for the Blind this year recorded a 100% pass in its fifth batch of candidates who wrote the Caribbean Secondary Examination Certificate. Seven candidates wrote five subjects each at the examination. Candidates were tutored by three instructors financed by the Ministry of Education. For persons with disabilities, it's, it's a big achievement. We had four blind students that wrote, and they wrote 16 subjects in total, and they passed all. So we got a 100% pass rate for the blind students. Top performer Shimona Sigrim obtained five grade two passes. Sigrim, who aspires to be a teacher, said that she plans to go to the University of Guyana to forward her studies. I have always been encouraged to do the program, but I was always afraid and um, a lack of confidence in myself because I have not been able to go to school as much as most people would have. Last year is when I was pushed to do it, and I'm very, very happy that I did. Performers copying the second and third position also noted their successes. Dawn Benjamin wrote four subjects securing grade two passes. Sandy Thomas obtained three grade twos and two grade threes in his five subjects. My um, desire is to work along with students who have visual impairment. Um, I would like to give them my experience and knowledge. I'm pretty satisfied with the grades that I have. Okay, so I'm thinking on going and um, following my studies at the Sierra College of Education and um, help persons with disability by teaching. The candidates also thanked the Ghana Telephone and Telegraph Company for providing free internet access which supported them through the process. The newly established informer unit located at a Palms geriatric facility has made a significant impact in meeting the medical needs of residents of the elder facility. Director of Social Services Wentworth Tana, during an exclusive interview with News Update, explained that a recently commissioned infirmary at the Palms Geriatric Home is working to ensure to the better quality of life of residents of the institution. 
Tane explained, since the installation of the infirmary ward, the number of patients facing various types of communicable diseases needing to be referred to the Georgetown Public Hospital for further medical care has significantly dropped. Tana further explained that based on a three-shift rotation by nurses and doctors, the facility is efficiently accomplishing its mandate by ensuring patients of the Palms are afforded absolute care. It has been fully occupied almost every day since the, um, since the commission in. Of course, it's not different persons each day, but it's been fully occupied. Um, we have staff that are assigned directly to the infirmary on a 24-hour basis. So there are three shifts, and uh, the three shifts would cover the 24-hour period. Um, we have a doctor during regular working hours that is between 8 and 4.30. However, there's a doctor on call also in case of an emergency during the hours, well, after work hours. The Director of Social Services explained up to five patients at a time, some of whom are recurring patients, are accommodated for at the infirmary ward. He explained that the system by which patients are treated at the infirmary and transferred to the Georgetown Public Hospital for additional treatment in cases of extreme circumstances is extremely thorough. And we have many persons um, uh, because uh, you know when sometimes they, they get diabetic infections and so forth, and uh, we would uh, you know take them down there uh, temporarily in order to ensure that it's, play, it's brought under control before they return to the ward. Many times when we, um, these situations get um, dire, as I would like to say, and persons are sent to the Georgia Hospital in particular, when they return, sometimes they're not at a state after assessment by the doctor to necessarily return to the ward. So at that point, um, those persons are placed in the infirmary for observation for a three, four day period. While the ministry is looking to have the facility enhance its standards with services necessary for the proper care of residents, there are plans for further renovations needed to help the process. The infirmary commissioned in April was said to have cost the government some $18 million. It bears one infectious ward, an observation ward, a waiting area, a dispensary and it functions around the clock. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lushana Gomes, Cornelius. Rajesh Lakhan today spoke with a number of persons who, while supporting the $20 increase in minibus fares, also called for a code of conduct for drivers and conductors. Let's take a look. On this week's edition of What People Say, Guinness shared their views on the recent announcement by the Ministry of Business that minibus fares will be increased by $20 effective September 1. Um, if, if it helps, if it, if it helps the bus driver, I don't see any problem with it. I mean, granted, I, I expect that adding $20 to people's bus fare would cost more. Yes, but I, 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 feel, I, I believe that it helps. It's like trickle down economics, I guess. The more the more money is spent on the lower on the lower income people, the better it is for the economy generally. So I think if uh, it's not a problem, I don't have a problem with it. I think I think it's, it's a good initiative on the on the drivers and behalf because gas price raise and you know and cost of living just getting higher and higher. But twenty dollars is a is kind of dicey situation the uh, the people them are in because nobody want to pay extra thing but. They got to give and take with the gas prices also. So. My thoughts on it, uh, I don't think it, it should be implemented. Uh, right now, with the state of the economy, things are hard as it is. Uh, to $20 more to on, on the bus fares is kind of hard, on, especially parents when, you know, school time is actually right around the corner. And giving them uh, a certain amount of money, like that $20, you know, it's a bit hard when it comes on a monthly basis. Given that it was already approved by the Ministry of Business and the Minibuses um, Union, what do you think can be done now? There's nothing can be done at, at the moment. I think we just got to uh, roll with the punches. But be, um, going forward, I think they should, you know, do a survey, do a tally uh, with the Guyanese people to find out, you know, what they feel like, you know, it, if to, you know, implement a $20 increase. I think if the gasoline go up, you should pay the $20. But if the gasoline drop, 
they don't drop the thing because I just pay $80 from where I'm living and they already start paying $100. But I have two children to send to school, so if you're sending a secondary school child to school and you got to pay $100, which in they got to pay $100 from home to town, then $80. It's double passage they got to pay. So I think if the gasoline go up, we should be able to pay it, but then if it go back down, they should drop it. You think it's time that they have a code of conduct in place? Oh, definitely. Drivers, yeah, service? Definitely, I completely agree on that. From the music to the to the speed which, which they drive to their attitude, it needs to change. Because if we're going to pay more, if we're going to ex expend this much more money on them, then they definitely need to change the way they behave. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Friendly. Yes. Uh, uh, our drivers and, and conductors, um, some of them are, you know, they, they, they dress appropriate, but then some of them are not dressed appropriate. They, they're in work in the buses and vests, in, in, in tank tops, in short pants, slippers. So that's something that they should look into as well. The way to deal with passengers, um, that's a whole other story. Um, especially right now, as you know, we're getting oil, the tourism industry will be growing. So that's something that you know, they should implement our training for bus drivers and conductors as well. Um, I think that we all should dress decent. And yes, they should dress properly because some conductors, I see they're wearing their pants still and they need their bumsy. And I don't think, I have a teenager son and I don't think that is appropriate, especially when you got to deal with passengers. And drivers, I, I have never seen a driver drive in short pants, but I think they should dress properly. And in terms of the way that they treat um, passengers? Well, I have a long take on that, but I don't have the time to speak on that. But um, I think we should have transportation for the elderly because the young people now these days don't have any discipline when it comes to old people. I see uh, up to just now a, a conductor put out a big man out to eat bus. He say he smell bad. Um, I think the government need to put something in place to the elderly. For MTV News Updates, I'm Rajesh Lakan. Join us now for today's health tip. Diabetes is one of the leading causes of death in Guyana, leaving many families in grief. There are several ways of dealing with diabetes and be well informed on a way forward. First, stress makes everything worse. Stress can get in the way of taking care of yourself and managing your diabetes. Be sure to know what's causing your stress in your life. Learn ways to reduce or cope with daily stresses. Schedule something fun for yourself on a regular basis. Exercising makes it even better. Exercise is good for everybody. It gives you more energy, reduces stress, helps you relax, and makes it easier to fall asleep. Work towards doing at least 30 minutes daily. Make it fun, not a chore. Find a healthier way of eating that you can stick with for life. Instead of thinking about food as either good or bad, think about which foods support good health. Eat a variety of foods to make sure you're getting the vitamins and minerals your body needs. Talk to your dietitian to find a meal plan that works for you. Keeping regular appointments with your doctor and getting tests and screenings on time helps you be more an active partner with your healthcare team. Know what questions to ask, write them down ahead of time. Let your doctor know at the beginning of each visit what specific things you want to talk about. And finally, join a group. Groups work magic. A problem shared is a problem solved. You'll be amazed at how much you have to offer others. Chelsea Griffith now joins us with today's Court Roundup. A 24-year-old scam artist was today sentenced to three years jail by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan after pleading guilty to charges of obtaining money under false pretenses. 
Jermaine Fraser of Lamaha Springs, Georgetown, pleaded guilty to the charge which read that on April 26 in Georgetown, he obtained a sum of $400,000 from Baldio Puran by falsely pretending that he was in position to acquire a Toyota 212 motor car, knowing same to be false. He was also charged for obtaining $300,000 from Ashmi Singh on May 4, 2018 at La Parkan, Lombard Street by falsely pretending that he was in a position to acquire a motor bus, knowing same to be false. It is further alleged that on June 29 at Charlotte Street, Lacey Town, he obtained the $200,000 from Floyd Lafleur by falsely pretending that he was in a position to acquire a minibus. The unrepresented man pleaded guilty to the two other charges. However, he denied the charge which alleged that on July 31 at Georgetown, Fraser obtained $1.4 million from Damien Persaud by falsely pretending that he was in a position to acquire a premium motor car. The chief magistrate sentenced Fraser to three years jail on each charge that he confessed to. Sentencing will run concurrently alongside each other. However, on the charge that he denied defrauding Persaud, the matter is adjourned until August 31. A 28-year-old driver attached to Federal Management Security Services was today freed from a causing death by dangerous driving charge due to insufficient evidence. Dallon Dublin of Anna Katharina, West Coast Demerara, had the charge dismissed against him by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. Dublin was on a trial for the charge which alleged that on May 6 at the land of Canaan Public Road East Bank Demerara, he drove motor car PRR 6380 in a dangerous manner resulting in the death of Garfield McPherson, a 47-year-old security guard of Bachelor's Adventure East Coast Demerara. According to a police release, Dublin was the driver of the motor car and McPherson along with another were passengers of the car. The report detailed that while the car was proceeding north on the land of Canaan Public Road East Bank Demerara, Dublin lost control of the vehicle and drove into a nearby trench. The driver and the two occupants were taken to the Diamond Diagnostic Centre, where McPherson was pronounced dead on arrival. The other passenger is still currently being hospitalised. Chelsea Griffith reporting for MTV's Court Roundup. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sports Update and more. Stay with us. GBTI will make it a summer to remember. Going on vacation, doing in-store or online shopping. Do it with GBTI's Visa. Get a chance to win an all-inclusive trip to Baganara Island Resort. Dinner for two at New Driving Restaurant. And gift certificates from Massey Stores. GBTI, your friend, your bank. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, ground floor, city mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful maro, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Bring joy and laughter to your children with play equipment from FiberTech. Together, we can help to promote healthy lifestyle and improve socialization. We cater for your home, play parks, play groups, nursery and primary schools. So let the fun begins. FiberTech, where quality and standard are guaranteed. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, every and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. 
Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Gafos proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafours setting a new benchmark. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. Florida is expected to be one of the venues for the West Indies Home Series against India next year, Cricket West Indies has announced. Chelsea Griffith has more. As part of an agreement to make the U.S. state of Florida a key cricketing venue, West Indies are expected to host India in Florida next July, immediately after the 2019 World Cup as part of a long-term strategy to play a minimum of two T20Is in North America every year until 2022. Cricket West Indies CEO Johnny Grave said there is full board support as part of their strategic plan over the next five years to bring regular games into the Americas to grow the game since they are huge advocates of associate cricket. The Windies will be playing as separate sovereign countries of the West Indies, which is no problem for the CWI. Since the USA Cricket Board is yet to be fully ratified, it was mentioned that the CWI will seek the ICC's permission to directly host the matches. They are expected to be primetime affairs starting as late as 9 p.m. in Florida in order to accommodate Indian television market while also ensuring the comfort of the people coming to the stadium. India will start their 2019 tour with T20Is at Central Broward Regional Park in Lauderhill before travelling to the Caribbean to play ODIs and tests. According to the FTP, New Zealand 2020, South Africa 2020 and Pakistan 2021 are also scheduled to tour the region while India will visit again in 2022. Bangladesh have already come and gone. The PCB and CWI had tentatively agreed to play T20Is in Florida after the West Indies toured Pakistan this past April. But Graves said finding a window outside the FTP has been difficult. When asked if a tri-series in Florida would be possible involving Pakistan and India, he said that playing that many matches at the same venue could be problematic. Meanwhile, CWI extended an annual invitation for USC and Canada to play in the regional Super 50 competition, which begins in October, with Grave also hoping the women's teams from both countries will be open to playing domestic cricket in the West Indies. CWI had also played a part in helping Canada run their global T20 tournament in June and July. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sports Update. Jamaica Tullowers can't wait to get on the first plane out of Fort Lauderdale after their disastrous three-game home stretch in Florida ended with yet another defeat. Stephen Smith was the architect of their wall, striking a half century to end Barbados Tridents to a total of 156 and following it up with a match-winning spell of 2 for 19 in three overs. Scores in the match, Barbados Tridents 156 for 6 with Smith 6 for 3 and Shy Hope 43 leading the way. Tolliver's skipper Andrew Russell picked up 2 for 32, Tolliver's reached 154 for 3, while Johnson Charles 42, Smith returned with the ball for Tridents and picked up the 2 for 19. Let's take a look at how last night's nail biter went down. Touch. In the air and out, yeah. the second falls. A loose shot trying to pierce the offside field. Oh, crunch time. Marty Gutto, don't look round, it's a horrible sight. Oh, El Dorado celebration, and why wouldn't you? <laughs> Some just shot by She Hope all the way for six. 
Shots. Lovely. He, he barely looked as though Steve Smith that he hit that. 100 comes up for the Tridents. Have another one. Have another one. Just. It's another hero maximum. Rothman Powell was the man with a valiant attempt that failed. Oh, up and over. Up and over. And a wonderful strike. Oh no, he says. Oh no, he says. And he's hit the wickets anyway. But he's caught, but I think you'll find he's hit wicket. It Picked up. Into the sky she goes. Hero maximum. Well, that's been brutalized for four. He didn't want to be in the way of that. In the air, and that's gone well back into the stand. Huge hero, Maximum. But Jonathan Charles has picked it, and he has picked it well. Catch it's the cry, it's straight to mid wicket, and taken easily by Martin Guptill. Steve Smith strikes. Oh, he's took a long time. Phillips cannot believe it. He's gone big. He's gone big. How big? It's gone a long way up. And it's tipped over. It's tipped over for six. It was up in the air for a long time. It's Reef for the fielder. Not so sure how much he's got on this either. This should be gone. Oh, guess what? Oh, this has been hit well. What a good strike that is. Flicked by Ross Taylor. Well, it's Taylor's go zone. That is uh, gone for a boundary. Still in cricket, India captain Virat Kohli has moved back to the top of the International Cricket Council test batting rankings, while England's James Anderson remains the leading bowler. Kohli's 97 and 103 helped India win the third test at a Trent Bridge by two or three runs to trail England two for one in the series. The 29-year-old dropped to a second after the third test, but has moved back to both Australia's Steve Smith. Anderson leads South Africa's Kaisaka Robota and India's Ravindra Jadeja. There are no West Indians in the top 10 tests and one day rankings. However, Samuel Badre is at number 7 in T20 bowling. In the team rankings, the West Indies is ranked 8 in the test ahead of Bangladesh and Zimbabwe. In one internationals, the West Indies sit at number 9 behind Sri Lanka and at number 7 in the T20s. Ghana's national rugby team, the Green Machine, Slated to participate in America's Rugby Challenge in Colombia is facing massive challenges, including a change in management after arriving in the host country. Chelsea Griffith has more. Guyana's national rugby team, the Green Machine, departed yesterday at 14 hours to head for Medellin, Colombia, where they will be hoping to secure the title at the America's Rugby Challenge series. The team touched down in Panama where they remained in transit until 10 hours when they departed for Colombia and had an hour-long bus ride to Hotel Estadio Real in Medellin, Colombia. The team has been facing a few challenges since the last-minute change in team management. Team manager Major Earl Edgehill was unable to manage the team and on short notice, Sherlock Solomon took his place. There was no groundwork done, so the team was stranded in the lobby of Hotel Estadio Real for almost 45 minutes before being able to check in. After leaving the care of the GRFU at 10 hours yesterday, the team had not been provided with any meals until 9 hours this morning, where they were given unfiltered water to consume because there were no bottled waters available. Due to the lack of groundwork, the team is being forced to relocate to another hotel tomorrow and they are yet to acquire a training ground. Each rugby team will play three games in the round-robin tournament on August 26 and August 29, with the final round set for September 1. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MTV's Sports Update. In some tennis news, Andy Murray will play Australia's James Duckworth when he makes his return to Grand Slam tennis after a 14-month absence with a hip injury. The former world number one, and now ranked 378th, will play third seed Julian Martin Del Perro in the third round. Carl Edmund, his replacement at British number one, faces Italy Paolo Lorenzi, while Cameron Norrie meets Australian Jordan Thompson. 
John Nkunana has a tough match against French six, the said Caroline Garcia. British number one Conte 27 has dropped to 46 in the rankings after a year in which he has struggled to find consistency. Heather Watson and Cathy Swan are still trying to come through, qualifying as a Liam Brody in the men's draw. The US Open, the fourth and final match of the year, begins in New York on Monday. And finally in sport, the 2018 Miss World Guyana Beauty with a purpose six-week healthy Wally summer program has concluded. The six-week 2018 Miss World Guyana Beauty with a Purpose Healthy Holy Summer Program came to an end today at the Sophia Special School located at Lot 4 Exhibition Site, Sophia Complex, Greater Georgetown. This year's camp was facilitated by reigning Miss Guyana 2018 and Miss Demerara Mahaika 2018, Ambika Ramraj and franchise holder Natasha Martindale. The six-week camp kicked off on July 16 with an impressive number of underprivileged children aged 13 to 18. Natasha Martindale mentioned in the sessions over the past six weeks, they were educated on mental health and its vitality to their overall well-being, and they were also exposed to a variety of sporting and physical activities. This year, 2018, we have the amazing Ambika Ramraj who has taken up childhood trauma. It is really all about mental health awareness because, you know, a, a, a young child that suffers from some type of trauma needs mental health intervention. And so what this summer program has been doing is, is getting a group of, of young people, I believe it's the ages from maybe 12 to 19, um, really speaking to them through sports and, and ensuring that they are exposed to physical activities that can have a positive impact on uh, their entire experience with life, changing their perception, getting them a little bit more um, confident, self-aware, and dealing with a lot of other problems that I might not be at privy to say, um, because I really am not too qualified enough, but I think um, Ambika, who will speak more about the her project will tell you all of the great benefits that surrounds the, this summer program i when i came uh, a couple of days ago we've had a fantastic run with the kids really 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 nice children here and um ensuring that all of them are capable of becoming su successful in life the total number of children present had been fluctuating over the weeks and the amount went from 54 children to 35 for the closing day. Some of the children dropped out because of work study and others were at a disadvantage for transportation. Facilitator Ambika Ramraj added that the past six weeks have been the most fun and she wishes to thank the children for their support and contribution. These past six weeks with you guys has been really fun and it has helped me learn a lot and I've enjoyed every second of it, even the moments that, you know, we may have had a few quarrels and so on. I enjoyed it because I know at least you would have learned from it and I learned a whole lot from it as well. So the first two weeks, I think, was just getting to know you guys. And I know some of you pretty well. So I want to thank you for coming out through everything, thick and thin, through the days I weren't, I wasn't the best. And, you know, dealing with everything that I laid out to you and everything that you would have had to deal with here. So I want to thank you guys so much for that. And I hope that when this program continues and in the other parts that we have to come, that you will give your full support and full participation. So thank you again, all of you. Thank you. The children showed incredible improvement within a six-week period, according to Ambika. Chelsea Griffith reporting for MTV's Sports Update. And that's our sports package for this evening. Stay with us, more news after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. In the
region. Venezuelans trying to immigrate to Peru are rushing to get there before Saturday when new rules will come into force requiring them to have valid passports. So far, Venezuelans have been allowed to enter Peru with just their ID cards. Many have been waiting for their passport for years, with the authorities blaming mafias inside the registry services for the delays. More than 2 million Venezuelans have fled their country since 2014. They are fleeing a severe economic crisis, which has led to severe shortages of food, medicine and basic foods. Many of those fleeing the country say they are doing so because they cannot get the operations and medical care they need. And internationally, U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has responded to Donald Trump's latest attack on him by insisting that the Justice Department beheads will not bend to political pressure. The part rebuke of Mr. Trump came after the president paid personal comments about him during an interview. Mr. Trump has been versus in his criticism of the Department of Justice. He has been particularly riled by its handling of the inquiry into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Mr. Sessions, an early supporter of Mr. Trump's campaign, has stepped aside from that inquiry to avoid a potential conflict of interest and handed control to his deputy, Rod Rodinson. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 787. Let's turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and Burby's River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Alleged wife killer for court tomorrow. Esukibo rice farmers owed $130 million by millers. Guyanese scholar who died in peril to be laid to rest tomorrow. And in court, no West Indians in ICC's top 10 tests and one-day rankings. Carter broadcast at 23 hours today and at 6.30 hours tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical team, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.